All right, in this video, I want to touch on my last video, or my second to last video, where I showed that Cain, Abel's brother, was not in the lineage or the bloodline of Adam. In Genesis chapter 5, when it gives an account of Adam's lineage or bloodline, Cain is not included. So, then we go here. Then we go here in 1 John chapter 3, verse 12. says that not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. So we see here two accounts showing that Cain is not of Adam. And then you ask, well, who is Cain of? And I said that I believe that Cain, as it says here, is of the wicked one, Satan, otherwise known as Lucifer before he became Satan, the adversary. But then there's this verse, Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, And Adam knew Eve his wife, colon, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. So it looks like to me <laughs> there's three things going on here. Either Cain came from Adam, or Cain came directly from the Lord as immaculate conception, or Cain came from the wicked one, which is Satan. Because as you can see here, those three options... It's like it's saying all three of them. Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain. Okay, so if it's Adam's, why isn't Cain in Adam's lineage in Genesis chapter 5? It gives Cain's lineage in Genesis chapter 4, then it gives Adam's lineage in Gen Genesis chapter 5. It is just, you know, confusing. And then it says, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Okay. So does that mean that it was directly from the Lord without Adam? You see the three options here, how it can be confusing. Now, let me show you something else. What this is, is text from something called the Targum. What the Targum is, is an ancient Aramaic translation from the Hebrew into English. And it was around from the first century. So, I mean, it's like, way old and this is what it says and adam knew hava his wife who had desired the angel and she conceived and bare cain and she said i have acquired a man the angel of the lord so there we see it changes the entire context or meaning then Genesis chapter 4, verse 1, where it says that Eve got a man from the Lord, and you look that Lord up, that's Jehovah. And here we have a totally different thing which fits more with uh, Cain being of the wicked one, an angel of the Lord. And so there are also other uh, translations in the Aramaic that lean towards this idea also in fact they're more direct they say that she literally you know had relations with the angel of the lord now we know this was going on in genesis chapter 6 sons of god saw the daughters of man that they were fair and they came in unto them and bare children there were giants on the earth in those days and also after that so we know this was going on for sure but some people don't want to believe that it was Eve that actually did this. Well, I think it was because look at when you look at Genesis 3 chapter 3 and God curses them. One of the things is cursed about childbirth, how there will be pain. So why out of all things God would uh, use that as a curse? Something about birthing children. Possibly because of Eve's fornication and maybe even Adam too. We don't know. Because Adam partook of that fruit too. Again, um, we know that this happened 
ever since man began to multiply on the face of the earth, this was happening. And this is my view, and this is what I believe personally, is that Cain was of the wicked one, genetically, physically, you know, and spiritually. And But I can respect somebody else who doesn't believe that because of Genesis 4.1. It says that she got a man from the Lord, Jehovah. That's Jehovah. So, you know, you can kind of go either way, right? But there's just too much strangeness behind it to say that it's not of the wicked one, Cain. Because he's not included in Adam's lineage. He is not in Adam's bloodline. So, right there tells me something is missing. And then also... When we go back to Genesis chapter 4, verse 1, we see here that colon. That colon sticks in my mind too, where it says, And Adam knew Eve, his wife, colon. See, that colon is a separator. So even though the very next part of the verse, it says, And she conceived and bare Cain, that colon is there. Why is that colon there? Is that to separate Adam and Eve knowing each other? and then make the next part of the sentence separate, something else, that's kind of what a colon does. So it's connected, but it's different. That's what a colon is there for, as far as I've understood. So all these things, um, it just it's very confusing. I hate to say that the King James Bible, you know, is wrong. I'm not going to say that, because I, I don't know, but I know in the book of Revelation that we're warned that people will add and subtract. So, I love my King James. Like I always say, I trust it. I believe it. But, you know, on top of this, not necessarily that it's wrong, maybe. Maybe just from Hebrew to English, the stretch in language is so far away from each other that maybe sometimes, you know, you get things that are confusing like this. And also from the Greek, also. That the languages are so far apart. I mean, we don't even have the same amount of letters in our alphabet. Because you have to be careful. There are those people that go overboard and say, oh, you know, the Bible is all corrupted. That's not true. I don't believe that. I just believe that in some certain areas, maybe the language barrier has caused some of this. You just, ne you just never know. But again, um... This is the evidence for me to not prove a point, but simply to present a case to you guys so you can make up your own mind with a little more evidence and trying to understand what's going on.